Hey everybody, thank you for watching Aim for Survival. Today we're going to be showing the 2019 Spring Bug Out Kit. Stay tuned. Okay guys, this area looks pretty clear. Let's go ahead and unload, show you a little bit of what we brought with us. Again, this is for the Eastern Woodlands and possibly urban situations here in Tennessee. Again, this is for the spring 2019. I threw some stuff in here that I think you'll like. And the kit we're using, again, is the Rascal Archer. This is about 25. 30 liter dump pouch. Not exactly camouflaged, however, it will not gain too much attention and it doesn't scream tactical. Okay, so looking here, we do have a small, very streamlined bag. Probably weighs about 15, maybe 20 pounds, somewhere thereabout. However, my goal is to keep it light, but keep it resourceful. On the outside of the pack, you notice we do have some gloves. We do have a small hip pouch. And I do have a knife on the outside. This here is a cold steel Bushman Bowie knife. It does have a hollow handle, would be perfect for a spear. Definitely in the wilderness you may need to keep a little distance between you and a game animal. And it does have a ferro rod. On the outside sides we do have two pockets here. On the first one I keep one of the most useful pieces of gear, your bandana. Definitely useful as a face mask, as a sweat rag, possibly water filter. I do have both a dark and a light colored one. Definitely good for making signals. Next, I do have lock picks. Guys, in a bug out scenario, you may need to bypass locks to save your life, possibly jam them. Again, not a thief, but sometimes you gotta make movement. Next, I do have the safety lock folding saw. Guys, again, on the outside of my pack, where I'm going to need it, it's a very small tool. And there are other options available, guys, I realize this. This one fits. The small saws actually work very good for crafting. And I've got a backup, but we'll get there in a minute. And again, this is not a bushcraft kit, guys. This is a kit designed for hiking slash survival. And the reason being, the concepts in camping and survival are the same. You need to be able to eat and sleep comfortably anywhere you go. And the temperatures are changing here in Tennessee. We had snow this morning, a little bit of dusting. However, now it is approaching 80 degrees. So we need to be flexible. We need to keep it light so that we can keep moving. But going back to it not being a bushcraft bag, I do see the use for the bushcraft skills, the woodland skills, or as I like to call them, fieldcraft. However, to make up for that small saw, and just in case I'm in a long-term scenario, I do need a good saw for wood processing. This here is the Rat P. It is a neat little folding saw. You see we do have handles here. Two internal blades. We do have an aggressive wood saw and a plain hack saw. And again, both these blades will be very useful in emergency situations, possibly in the woods making fire. However, what if you're in an urban scenario and you need to access water? You might not have that silcock key available. Possibly you can get under the house and you can cut away some of the primary water lines. With that said, you can get to your water. Now this saw, I have it bolted down correctly. I did with the wood saw. However, now we can buck up smaller pieces of wood, do it much more efficiently in the field. Also, we do have this one, in case we need to access the plumbing water from under a building, might not always have a silcock key available to you. On the outside, very important, probably should have talked about it first, I do have a very quick trauma kit. I do have a TK4 tourniquet. 
gloves because you need a glove up. And just because it fits, I have a small rat style tourniquet as well. I do prefer the TK4s, however, rat will do you just as good. This is an off brand and it's for training purposes. Something else, this bag is for training. Guys, this is for playing around with some of the gear. I've got my main kits, that my main go-tos. However, there's no reason not to push our skills. Next, I do have duct tape, which goes in with the maxi pads. These work very good for improvising a trauma wound bandage. Again, it's very absorbent. And I do have antibacterial wet wipes. Good for cleaning a wound. Also for cleaning up after a bathroom. Again, if you're out in the woods long enough, you know what I mean. And here's something new that we'll be experimenting. We will do a review on it. And it is the SOL Emergency Space Blanket. It does have a reflective side and an orange colored size. Packed down very, very small guys, about the size of a pack of tuna. And just another real quick look, as we do not have a Grabber Gear Space Blanket, this will be our backup. And again, Grabber Gear makes a very good blanket. However, we definitely want to practice with newer gear. And a lot of this kit builds the same, going back to the cold steel knife. Yes, we do have our SE6 on us. But if we get separated from our main blade, we may need our backup if we just have the bag and run. Well guys, we got the blades, we've got a little bit extra shelter. So again, we do have our cutting tools. We do have our first aid and a shelter system on the outside of the pack. Everything is quickly accessible. I do have a pair of reinforced gloves, guys. When you're working in the woodlands, you definitely need to protect those hands. But also when you're dealing with unknown materials, you definitely want a good pair of waterproof gloves. Now opening up this dump style pack, this Rascal Archer is a really unique little kit. It does have a very large dump pouch. And again, these side pockets. Again, I have my saw in this one. Bandanas go in here with my jiggler keys. On the straps, I have put these small utility pouches. One has a monocular so that I can see, study, avoid, or track. Just leave that in there. On the other side, very useful piece of kit. I do have the Bushmaster multi-tool. Does have a knife and a saw on there. A decent option. You might want to go with your Leathermans. Now for the meat and potatoes of the kit, looking at this flap right here, I do have a flashlight with fresh batteries in it. It does work. It does have a high and a low mode. I do have a small improvised fire kit in case I need to make fire on the go. This is a four piece kit. We do have a easily visible lighter, a backup lighter, which is tied off with tinder quicks. I do have Pathfinder Mini Inferno and a homemade fire nugget, which I love as a go-to backup for stubborn fire starters. And again, need that lighter guys. We have a ferro rod already, but you don't want to risk it. Next, just in case I do want to get found, I do have another one of the Trailblazer whistles. They do come in three packs. And that's all in the top flap here. If you notice, it does have a really unique latching system here, set up parachute style, guys. Just with a quick tug, it's open. I like it. Breaking into this real quick, I do have a fleece blanket. I love fleece blanket. It definitely doubles as an extra piece of medical gear if you know how to improvise. It's also a good warming layer. As you saw me walking around earlier, I do have the Olympic tool machete. This is a beast of a blade, guys. And if I don't have an ax, then I need a big blade. So, love that right there. Okay, y'all have seen my Pathfinder Canteen, and that's set up into a kit that is for hiking, okay? My bottle carrier kit stays with my winter bug out bag. That is my go-to bag. And I have one on my work bag as well. However, in this kit, I do have a smaller canteen. First things first, coffee. Ain't no life without coffee, guys. <laughs> Sometimes you need that little bit of extra energy. And definitely look in the descriptions for this canteen system. I'll tell you more about it later. However, it's real simple. I do have water packets in case I do have to drink. Filtered pond water does a little bit go a long way. However, this is a real neat kidney style shaped canteen. Standard opening lid with a chain on there. That's an issue that we'll show you in another video how to fix. Again, we'll talk more about this canteen on a later date. 
it does have holding locking handle which I've come to like when you set it in the fire it don't tip over as easy as a cup does one drawback this particular canteen does not yet have a lid so I have aluminum full to cover it keep the ash out of my water okay so moving right down the line I do have a small kit watch towards the end I'll show what's inside here you'll like that it was a battle box tracking kit hunting and trapping kit I should say however let's get back to the main part we do have cordage again we have a metal container we have cordage we have cutting tools combustion device so far and including this we have our five C's guys we really already do but just in case I do have the mill spec adventure gear poncho I really really recommend this poncho guys for 30 bucks it's only ten dollars more than your cheapy nylons this will last you at least at least five or six years with the theme of shelter I do have the Terra Nova Adventure 2 Trail Tarp. I love this trail tarp, it is a silk nylon. Very sturdy, durable, can cover me and quite a few other people. Again, aiding to the green concealment factor. I do have a snug pack jungle hammock to get me off the ground, make sleeping a lot easier. And I don't need to, but I do have the straps for a hammock and these just make life easier. Pack down real small, they're worth the weight to me. And another pack of the UST food rations. Guys, you gotta have food that you can eat on the go. You can't always stop full water. Just looking through here, guys. We got our food, shelter, water, combustion, galore. We have first aid, cutting tools. Now I do have a little kit for just the little things here and there. So taking a look at this, the Survive First US. This is a hunting trapping kit, again, from BattleBox. It's a hard nylon case, but it also helps me organize some extra gear. In here I have a continuation of my fire kit, as I do have char cloth and a potential char tin. Little extra number 12 bank line and a razor blade, again possibly for skinning and fishing. Next, I do have several bits of craft wire, definitely great for improvising shelters and possibly trap snares. I do have copper wire. Very useful for many things, again, trapping being the most obvious. Next, I do have a compass. This compass will help me navigate. It has degrees on here, however, no base plate. We'll definitely get into a Sunto compass soon, or possibly a Silva. We'll see when we get there. Next, I have a makeshift fishing kit. All it really is, is two things, a monofilament line, very useful potentially in suturing if you had to, and small fishing hooks. Little hooks will catch big fish. Big hooks might not catch little fish, so went with the small hooks on that. An extra lighter, because you never know when you're gonna need instant flame. And an open L folding knife. These are really neat, really classic knife. Everybody's familiar, familiar with them. However, it's small enough to do the small tasks I need it to. I do have a small chainsaw. This works good, wire saw, I should say, ranger saw, some people call them. I do have, in this side, an all-weather notebook, just a pad of paper for making notes, possibly making terrain assessments. Do have a pencil, an ink pen, and a marker, the marker being definitely a great option, especially if you have to use one of them tourniquets. Last but not least, we do have a signal mirror. This is a very, very good mirror. I do have some tracking cards. This did come out of the tracking kit, you might want to know what's in your area, whether it be a bobcat, a mouse, skunk, porcupine. It just shows you the paw prints and just a little more information on each critter. Last but not least, I do have a small pamphlet informing you of different survival information. Again, some first aid, some hunting, some trapping, some fire making, shelter building. And again, it'd be a great read if I'm out and I'm stressed, however, it's also really good if I'm trying to explain something to someone else. So again, this is just a really neat way to carry some extra gear. I'd say I have far more than I actually need in this kit. But with that said, if I'm going to be out for a week or longer, I definitely want to be able to acquire food. Filter and boil water. The bandanas work really good for that. I want to be able to fish. But I also want to be able to hide Guys, 
You don't want to rely on your rifle if you do not have to. If you make noise, people might come for your gear or your gun. And again, this packs down really quick, really small, really useful. So here you go, guys. This is my spring 2019 loadout. Again, it's not always got to be about high-end gear. I do have good gear in my other kits. And I want to push my skill set and I want to practice with new gear. Again, something we'll be working on. We do have the Bushman Bowie. So we'll be putting a small survival kit in the handle of this to see where it goes. We do have our trauma implements, gloves, uh, absorbent materials, tourniquets. Guys, definitely want to up my game with a rat style tourniquet. I'm very good with the windlass style and the TK4 styles. However, there's always an opportunity to learn. I focus heavily on shelter, guys. Shelter making and just instant shelters, whether it be the tarp, the poncho, the Mylar space blanket. We do have a lot of conditions here in Tennessee. So for me, I have to be ready and I don't want to carry 500 pounds on my back. So that said, guys, it's just been a real quick look at what's to come on the channel. If you haven't already, smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, and as always, when you aim for survival, don't miss.